Hey guys, welcome to another episode of California Ant Keeper. Today we're going to be doing an update on a few of my colonies. Let's start with my Campanatus Levigatus. My last update on this colony was not that long ago, but since then I've had to open up two more areas of this nest. I'm pretty sure this queen is done laying eggs for the season. However, she does have a lot of brood in development, so once her brood develops, I'm going to hibernate her. As you can see, some trash is starting to fill up inside the nest, so that means I probably opened up one chamber too many. It's okay though, because once her next batch of workers hatches, they will remove the trash most likely. The outworld on this nest is getting harder and harder to maintain. Every time I open the lid, they run and try to escape immediately. So I usually only open the top of the outworld when there's no ants in there. But this will only last for so long because when the colony gets bigger, there will always be ants in the outworld. Let's move on to some honeypot ants. These are my Marimacostis testaceous. And I haven't showed honeypots in this channel in a while. The reason for this is because only one of my honeypot colonies is doing good. After the workers came from my other two honeypot colonies, the queens never laid eggs again. This is actually very common for this species. My Myrmacostis mendax, unfortunately the queen already died, but my Myrmacostis wheelary, they're still alive and the queen's still alive, but they're just not laying any eggs and I pretty much lost hope on that colony as well. But at least I still have this species of honeypot. So they're smaller than the other honeypots I had, but they're still very fun to watch. And I had them in an incubator, so when I pulled them out, the glass fogged up immediately, so it was very hard to film. I also noticed going back over this footage that there was lots of naked pupa and usually they have cocoons so this is kind of weird. I don't know if they're dying after they're born or they're just never being born or I don't know what's going on. Most likely I will keep this colony on heat for the first winter to ensure that they have enough workers to make it through. For the next update we have brood, more brood, More brood. And even more brood. My Lyameptum occidentale colony is doing absolutely amazing. And they are doing what they do best. Grow. Others might argue what they do best is escape. And they wouldn't be wrong either. In just a few months this colony will be two years old. And the workers are still getting bigger and bigger every time I check on them. They are very polymorphic and if you look very carefully you will notice some of the workers are a lot bigger than the other ones. This dirt area doubles as both an outworld and a nesting area and I always have to put water in one corner so that way they can keep digging and keep digging because if I let it dry out the tunnels will just collapse. I feed this colony very little protein now but I have to keep feeding them a lot of sugar or they'll die. If you notice, these ones are really lighter, and that means that they were just born. But this colony has so much brood, you don't have to look very hard to find an ant that's enclosing and starting to walk for the first time. I haven't been able to spot the queen for this colony in very many months, and I think you can guess why. There's just so many ants in there. And this colony tends to break out every six months or so and have a massive escape, so I'm lucky that hasn't happened lately. And hopefully we can keep it that way. Next we're going to move on to my favorite colony. My last video about a month ago was about this colony. But a lot has changed in the last month. I started power feeding my Novo Messer Coccarelli colony. About a month ago during my last video. And there is just so much brood now. This colony has about doubled since the last video. You can see the massive graveyard that is formed in the middle of their new outworld. For Novo Messer. It only takes about two weeks from egg to worker, and I've never had a species that comes even close to that fast. However, the brood will not form that quickly when you are in the founding stages. This colony completely stopped using their old outworld that is attached to the pioneer. It's completely barren except for their old trash pile and graveyard. This entire center area of the pioneer XL is completely filled with brood now. One thing I've learned about this species in the last month is that they need a lot of water to survive. I fill about 6 water bottle caps full of water each day just for this colony so they have enough water. And I only have to fill the sugar feeder about once a month. This colony had a pretty big die off when I connected them to the new outworld. 
But as soon as I started giving them caps full of water every day, they really bounced back and with a vengeance. The only time this colony is really, really active is for about the first hour after I feed them. But most of the day, they just lie there. And finally, let's talk about the Acromermix Versicolor Queens. I only have one of these queens left. I started with four and she is the only living survivor. And as you can see, her larva has finally turned into pupa. So this is a good sign, but I don't even really know if these eggs came from her or one of the previous queens. But thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.